Hey guys, welcome back to Ganchi Plans. A uh, few things. Sorry if the lighting's a bit much. I'm playing around with it and uh, I think I think I overdid it. Um, second thing, this is going to be a pretty brief video or else I'm going to try to make it that way um, because we all have valuable time and because my husband's taking care of the kids and I feel like they're not going to put up for, with him for very long. <laughs> Today's video is going to be about how to become a stay-at-home parent. Um, and when you Google that term and you search for it, like I've in, done in the past, mostly what you come up with, I think, is searches for like how feasibly, like logistically, financially to become a stay at home parent. The answer to that is pretty simple. My husband changed jobs twice and managed to basically double his income in about a, the span of a year. So we got lucky. Um, it worked out that I was not going to be able to keep my job and pay for childcare. It wouldn't work out financially without the friend we had who was watching our kids. And so here we are. I'm home with the kids full time and I'm loving it so far. It's been from December, January, February four months. So I'm no expert and there's a perfectly good chance that I am still in a honeymoon phase. Um, I, I, sometimes I feel like I'm playing house. And the thing is like, it's one of those things like, you know how when you're an adult or when you're a kid, you think that being an adult will feel different. But when you're an adult, you know that you feel exactly the same as when you were a kid, but you just now have all of these responsibilities and you just have to like pretend to be a responsible person. Um, yeah, it's kind of the same way. Like, I feel like I'm pretending to be a stay at home parent, but here I am, like I'm taking care of my kids full time. So anyway, today's video is not about how to do it financially. It's how to do it internally, how to become that person inside who is a stay at home parent. I hope I'm phrasing this well, but sort of a mindset shift, because I know that when I was looking at this, um, from like when I was on maternity leave and thinking about what it would be like trying to get a feel for staying home full time. Um, I wasn't sure I could do it. And I've, I was kind of looking forward to going back to work because it felt normal. It felt like, you know, I, that if I were staying home full time, I would be giving up something like that independence and freedom and schedule and stuff like that. Um, and I thought that I would have a harder time, honestly, than I have transitioning. So here are some of the mindset tips that I have implemented to get to where I am now, four months in. <laughs> the big thing is, like I said, mindset. Um, before my job was, you know, I would go into the office and I would do X, Y, Z tasks. It was all decided, you know, designed and all that. Um, I had a boss. <laughs> now I have to just think of, I still have a full-time job, but that full-time job is basically household manager, caretaker of these kids. And so sort of shifting my focus to it just being a job and being able to like put my emphasis on that when I'm on the clock, which is whenever my husband's not around, um, that has really, it's just a simple little thing, but just thinking about it that way that like, yeah, I am in charge of all of these tasks. And um, as far as the division of labor thing, like having one parent who's the stay at home parent, yeah, it's a lot of work, but also like that means that it's my job to delegate. So thinking about it that way with like emotional labor being labor, people are always talking about that and how it's like the keeping track of everything and knowing when to do the tasks is as much work as doing the actual tasks. And so therefore it's sort of unhelpful to say, well, how, tell me how I can help. Hey guys, editing Rebecca. I rambled on here for a while and I'm cutting it out. Uh, what I was trying to say is that if you take on the mentality of being the project manager of household tasks, then you're going to resent your spouse less when you do have to delegate a task to them because it was your responsibility explicitly in the first place. So thinking of the household management as a project at work kind of has helped me to step into that role, if that makes sense. As far as the day-to-day, -day, it can feel when you're a stay-at-home parent especially of young kids like this, that every day is full of such small insignificant tasks that no individual task feels like it's worthy of recognition. And then at the end of the day, like you've done all these tasks that individually don't mean anything, but cumulatively mean everything. At the end of the day, you can't even remember what it is you've done. 
you know that every moment of the day was spent doing something important, but you can't put your finger on what it is that you got done. It's nice on the days when I did like get a chunk of time to organize a thing and I can say, look at this, look what I got done. But most days it's like I was wiping butts and I was tidying toys and I was sweeping floors and all these little things that I've totally forgotten. So my next tip is to keep track of what you got done. I've started using instead of an X for a task that I planned to do and then got done, in my planner, I'll use a plus sign for something that I didn't have to plan to do, but that I got done anyway. And that gives me an extra boost of like, yeah, I'm on top of things. I'm getting things done and have, keeping like a to do done list or to, I've seen people call it like a to done list or a done list as, or a reverse to do list can really help because if you set out to do a certain number of things and then don't get them done, you're going to feel terrible about it. Potentially you didn't scrub the, you know, the, tub today but you did do all these other things so like give yourself credit for everything that you did to the point where you, as much as you need it to feel okay about yourself by the end of the day because uh, yeah the house could look great at noon or you know 3 p.m but then once my oldest comes home and I'm getting dinner ready it ends up looking a mess by the time my husband comes home and I feel self-conscious about that I need to remind myself of everything I did get done so speaking of husbands, communication of responsibilities is super important. Um, like I judge myself when he walks in and the house is a mess, but we've had a conversation about it and found out that he really doesn't judge me for any individual mess when he walks in. Um, and like just knowing that has lifted things a whole lot. Um, communication of like, what things are still going to be like primarily his responsibility um, or things that he expects to get done so that you can either prioritize those things to love him or, and I'm saying him, this applies opposite also if you're a stay-at-home dad, um, or else, you know, communicate the unrealisticness of certain response or certain expectations. That's always important. Um, so it's, it's difficult to not take offense, but like, that's important. Uh, as far as keeping yourself sane, maintain hobbies. If you can, I haven't really great, but I've done this video content stuff and that's been sort of my outlet. Um, relax when you can. And the thing that I keep trying to remind myself is that the snuggles are part of the job. It's a nice perk of the job, but it's not indulgent to spend time you know, stop what you're doing, cleaning the kitchen and go read your toddler that story she wants. Um, like loving my children is the job and it's the job that I can uniquely do as their mother. Um, and so it's, I can get so tied up in all of the household things that I need to get done that sometimes I want to just brush her off and go, that's not important. But like, obviously that's the most important. And I have to constantly remind myself of that. Um, and it's okay to set a timer and say, look, I'm gonna devote all my attention to you for 15 minutes. Um, and then I need to devote all my attention to this other thing um, because dinner needs to get made, you know? But just reminding myself that spending the, the extra moments and attention to love my children um, by my presence and my activities with them um, has been very important. And then the last kind of set of tips um, is like to decide what kind of, or figure out what kind of person you are, whether you are the person who needs like a village of like people that you need to talk to adults all the time, or you are more of a homebody. Um, do you feel more in control? Like I, I actually feel more in control when I'm out of the house. Cause like no one's messing up my house when I'm out of the house. We have what's in the diaper bag and well, that's it. Um, so I kind of like to be out, but also at the same time, I like to group my, um, errands together because I really just hate getting people in and out of car seats. So just figure out what works for you, what you like, what you don't like, you know, do you like going to library story time or would you rather just take your kids to the park by yourselves? Um, and so find the groups, the mom groups, the kid groups, the play date groups, um, the, you know, school parents and find what you need and be really intentional about that. And then last but not least, of course, take it slow. 
try not to compare yourself to anybody else because like look on social media it's going to be extremes you're going to see either the people who all they talk is about how tough it is and people who will make it look like they have their whole lives put together by careful camera angles um, like i am doing right now because there's a basket of laundry just off frame um so just like yeah try not to compare yourself try not to compare yourself to what you see in other people around you and your your own mom for example like she had it way harder than you probably remember because you were too little to understand. Also on that note, like your kids probably aren't gonna see how much you're struggling. They're gonna see how much you're there for them. Um, so you're doing better than you think, basically. And you can continue to do even better than you did the day before um, and take it all in stride. You know, you're gonna have your ups and downs. Uh, some days are really tough, but other days are super rewarding and it's super worth it. So I hope that this was helpful to anyone else who, like me, is starting out their stay-at-home parent journey. Um, it's totally worth it. It's, um, you know, a sacrifice and struggle. Um, we did end up taking a bit of a pay cut to do this, but I think it's worth it. Um, and it's it's been a beautiful experience so far. Um, so go ahead and subscribe if you want more of this kind of thing now that I am here and with the kids full time. You're going to see more of them. You're going to see more of this stuff, especially over my Instagram. A lot of my reels are about this lifestyle now, um, but I also post planner stuff there. Um, I'm mostly a planner person and I post videos about that every Thursday. So I hope you guys have a productive day. Like subscribing the bell and I'll see you guys in the next video on Thursday. Bye.